Welcome back to Ultra Review, episode number 26. With these four episodes, episodes 27, 30 of Ultra 7, I'm officially on my break. So after this, we'll be reviewing any more to Ultra 7 for quite a while. Well, until I get some anime done. So, in these four episodes. Well, the first episode for this batch, called Operation Cyborg, where a friend of Sota's who has a fiancé, who's... The whole thing with this one over him, it's like one of two episodes he gets a focus on. The other is, believe it or not, episode 29. In a very curious episode, I'll get back to that. I'll get to that one. So, the fiancé and the friend, who is who's the UG communication officer, they get kidnapped by aliens. And she is allowed to go free for some reason. And the aliens proceed to reconfigure the communications officer, which, by the way, it's really he was converted to a freaking he was partially converted to a cyborg. Explain why he basically is no selling all of Dan's moves when he fights something on the episode. Yeah, and is is he's given a mission to blow up the the base that he works at. That's with these tiny with these bombs basically the size of my hand. Yeah, plant him in all of these places and blow up. So, he goes visit his fiance, which, of course, apparently by the time this happened, like, several weeks have passed by since this happened. Yeah, first episode to do a time jump. One of two. The other being episode 29. Not sure why there is a time jump. You could say, presumably, this opening scene may take a place at some point during the course of the episodes and having like between there probably seven episodes between that's the best way I can buy it if that happened is that what if basically the other stuff happened in between that the opening scene and the uh, time skip in the episode that's a possibility I could say that possibly like we have about five or six episodes passed by who knows so, the friend is free, he basically gets out, and he's working with the aliens of the episode, who is not given a name, they do want to blow up the base because they want to invade the planet for reasons, and Dan obviously is the one who knows that something is wrong. No one else knows anything wrong, but Dan does. Now, I'm not sure at this point how long he's a member of the Ultra Guard, I would say maybe six months, but they don't know this at this point. Not really. So he does find out, and of course he knows that he fights him, and he's knocked out. Well, basically, Daniel's letter saved, and they find all the bombs pretty easily, except one, which the viewer can easily see where it is on Dan's boot. And of course, Dan uses the bomb when he uses an ultra form, ultra seven form, to fire up the throw out the monster. He proceeds to presumably defeat it. And the name of the monster this episode. This alien he fights is quite interesting to say the least. Yeah, for this particular episode for 27, Alien Borg. It's this like armor alien. Who shockingly returns after this. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting episode. The, the villain gets defeated by having his head chopped off. The 28 is interesting. And I love this episode. Purely because of the fact. It doesn't feel like aliens are involved with this. It feels like basically like a, like a spy episode. Where the, the foreign agents are technically aliens, but they're never given a name on screen. They're identified online as Alien Kill. They want to get their hands on this device they have. The only type of alien thing we have the whole episode is the ending. It felt as though this episode probably was meant to be a regular spy episode that was reconfigured to basically just throw in stuff from Ultra 7. That's what it feels like to me for this one. Oh, the monster is, is basically a shovel that Brianna gets at. So, so the the device they have to transport to this thing. So, Dan comes with an interesting idea. 
Darby, uh, 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 basically a race where, like, apparently, like, Team One is actually the bad guys of the thing. Now, why are they after this device? Don't know. And when they finally, after, there's also this whole thing with Akashi where he's basically just very nervous and somewhat a coward. Now, they've never really shown him to be a coward in the series that much. And apparently this is a way to get him over it. So, when they finally run the test, after all the, uh, after a landmine being shot at with a freaking machine gun, it turns out, even abandoned the car several times in the episode, it turns out that the device they're carrying is a fake. Because the real one, the military had, so they had to do a cover story. And about test, and all of a sudden, we see this thing, we see the ground opening up, and it's a freaking dinosaur tank. Like, what? Yeah, this thing is freaking huge. Like, I call this very original for this series, a dino tank. Oh, by the way, it's not defeated by the little headband. It's basically blown up. But really cool episode. Love this one. In the case of episode 29, this is one basically where this feels like basically like it was supposed to be a movie for Ultra 7. But it was condensed down to an episode because it feels like this is basically like a 45 minute movie. Given the pacing of this episode. Where like, okay, so we have the satellite launch in orbit. Also, what we know because we had the fight at the end of the episode. It's longer than the normal fight. We actually have a cutaway to something else. While this is going on, which I found to be quite ingenious. First time I've seen it for this, for this franchise. I think it was in this episode. I Actually, it was the last episode. But I did notice the little little thing where he had fires the laser beam from, from. It was blinking. In this episode, the fire is at night. Which, I gotta praise the fact that that's quite ballsy for this episode, for the series. Yeah, it doesn't feel like an alien invasion story, but it's a lot of fun. It is by far the most exciting episode to watch I've seen the whole series. I don't feel bored. It has a good story, but it feels like an action movie. But it then sounds 25 minutes, sadly. Watch the episode, you'll find out based on this one. The last episode, last episode, this is quite interesting. So, there's a training exercise. Also something going on in the dunes. By the way, the alien plot of this thing, it's basically minor compared to the main plot. Where, get this. So we have Fukushi and Soga basically doing shot pool, uh, shot, uh, shotgun pool, and all of a sudden, Rider Man shows up in Kamen Rider. You're thinking, wait a minute, what the heck is Rider Man doing here? Well, it's his actor. Yes. Which, uh, this might surprise you. This came out seven years prior to Kamen Rider V3. V3 was released, I think he did his debut, and I think it was like toward the end of the series, in the last 12 episodes. Actually, it was like six years later. And, like, this this whole thing with this one is that, okay, so he wants to, he's basically joining the Ultra Guard. He basically, is, he's cocky, but he's actually quite talented. So... He also has this thing for upstaging Dan the whole episode. Which is interesting. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention 29. Soka's got a fiancé in the episode. That is never mentioned again. Does he marry her? Nope. No mention of it. She's here for that one episode as a plot device, which apparently originally I, I read... That originally the plan was not to have her be his fiance, it was to be his sister. But I guess fiance was something else. But at least basically it's not like marrying the sister thing. It's stupid. But this episode, it's like Dan is basically being a supporting character in his own show. Because we had to focus on this new character, Okiki, where he does not wear a Ultra Guard outfit, he's just like a pilot. He's got a scarf that covers up part of his chin. I thought that was interesting. No explanation exactly why he's not given an Ultra Guard. He's part of the Ultra Guard. As far as I give the uniform, it's completely baffling. When Dan joined the Ultra Guard, he actually was given a freaking uniform. 
And I felt as though that the, that the alien plot of this episode was very minor at best. It's like all developing as one shot character because he's, he wants all the glory and the esteem, and the fact he also fails to report action in a forest. He's also very cocky too. And Sally put the guy dies at the end of the episode. It would be interesting to see stay on board, but I guess they probably didn't have much, have much room for the script for him. But great episodes. I'm like, wow. Though the aliens themselves are quite well. In the case of the four episodes, I would say the aliens in 27 are kind of stupid. Like, why the heck do they want to make the play for in the first place? Oh, and they need to finish it by lifting it with magnets and giving, give, uh, just dropping explosives on it. Like, okay. Interesting. Like, and of course, like I mentioned, 29 is like a movie. 30 is definitely feels like a Santa episode. 27 is, like, I would say, like, <laughs> the one that doesn't feel like an episode of the series is episode 28. That does not feel like an episode of the series. This, the alien stuff is very minor at best. But yeah, great four episodes. Love them. Uh, so, with that, like I said, I am on break from Ultra 7. Where I'm going to be hopefully reading some stuff. Just so I can start my review for Demon Lord Retry. Yep. Excuse me. That's been pretty much it for of you. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications. And do not hit the like button. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and, well, look at the time right now. I'm probably just going to do one comic corner and call it a night. Okay? For the next video, bye.